Thanks to Pierre and welcome Pierre for this session and uh, we'll let him get started. Thanks. Thanks Jim. Uh, first of all, good morning everybody. Can you hear me back there? I'll have to throw in my gym voice, which uh, as my wife says, I don't have a tough time doing. She always is telling me, don't yell at me, don't yell at me. I, had a, I keep telling her it has nothing to do with the volume of her voice, but anyway, um, so I, every couple of years we have this thing here in Edmonton and, and Jim drags me out uh, every couple of years to talk about something. And uh, this topic that they asked me to do, I'm not sure exactly how it uh, came up, but it's, it's one that's uh, fairly near and dear to my heart. It uh, goes back to my, uh, my background as a biomechanics researcher that started back in the uh, 70s, believe it or not. And uh, at that time, the technology we used to, uh, to analyze human motion consisted of uh, 16 millimeter film and projectors. For some of you, may, you may never have even seen that stuff. Uh, and it cost, uh, I did my master's thesis on the biomechanics of the volleyball spike jump, and I spent $1,000 on film and, and developing. And uh, the quality of the product wasn't anywhere remotely close to what you can get on your uh, smartphones today. So um, it's been a, a passion of mine, not just study of human movement and particularly volleyball, uh, but also the use of technology has been something that's intrigued me uh, for a very long time. And, and because of that, I was always kind of pushing the envelope to see if I could make it work with my, with my volleyball coaching. Uh, and really, to be honest with you, uh, the technology really wasn't in place until the last five years to really do it efficiently. Uh, and I learned from making a lot of mistakes that um, uh, if you don't uh, apply the technology correctly, it ends up being a detriment to your coaching and not an improvement to your coaching. Uh, but with today's technology, it's really reached the point that it's virtually available to any one of you here uh, because of the technologies that, uh, that we have. So as just kind of an introduction uh, to where we're going to go today, I just wanted to sort of give you a little bit about my, uh, my background. So without uh, further ado, we'll get, uh, we'll get going here. Now the, uh, the main, I know for some of you are doing your uh, certifications and so on, the big thing that we're of course talking about here is skill error detection and correction. And so uh, the use of technology is something that really can make a difference today. And if applied properly, it'll make a, a huge difference. And you can do this both in practices and during matches. Can everybody at the back still kind of see this up here? It's good? All right. Um, it's. I found it particularly, I've been using it for a long time, but really it was not particularly efficient. Uh, even uh, probably four or five years ago, I was using a, a camera, a high-speed camera, and uh, it cost me $500, and it just was, it was so cumbersome to use that it was really quite inefficient, and in the end, in many respects, was detrimental to the actual coaching. Now, it was great for me because I could take these, these videos and I could, I could look at them and sort of uh, learn myself about the skills, but as a teaching aid, uh, it really wasn't particularly good. Um, so if it's used properly, it can greatly increase the efficiency uh, of your coaching. However, if you don't use it correctly, it can be very inefficient and in fact decrease the training and learning that your athletes go, uh, go through. So I'm kind of, that's why I think this is a really appropriate topic now because I can take you through the things that I think are important to be aware of and most of these are from things I've learned by making a lot of mistakes and, uh, and wasting a lot of Particularly, I guess, athletes' time. I never considered it a waste of my time because I felt I was always learning, but it certainly wasn't necessarily great for the athletes. Um, the main advantage of the technology today is that it allows us to control time. That's ultimately what it comes down to. So when we look at the, the, the technologies that I'm talking about today, you'll see they're all about controlling time. 
And going back to my biomechanics research days, that's ultimately what we were trying to do was to take the time, the movement in time, and slow it down, usually slow it down so that we could look at it in a, in a better manner. Because human motion, and especially uh, the sport of volleyball, sometimes happens so fast uh, that you can't really see what's going on. So you really need the, the aid of the, the technologies to help you there. Um, so technology today is both user-friendly and relatively inexpensive. And uh, just to reiterate what I said earlier, and it's really only been in the last five years that, that it's been at that point. Uh, we all carry these, uh, our phones, or vast majority of us carry these phones, uh, and the tablets and so on that are around, and so if we use these correctly, they can make a very big difference. Now, uh, I'm going to start sort of my, the rest of my discussion off with a note or a warning. This should not be considered a, a replacement for a good coach. And in fact, all it really does is enhances your uh, knowledge of your skills and your ability to detect, the, detect and correct the errors. So don't think that these are magic solutions. They are not magic. They are incredible aids. But it still doesn't divorce you of the responsibility of learning everything you can about the skills of the sport that you're coaching in. And for, if you're like me, volleyball is your passion, and this is something that you can use to make a, a significant difference if you use it properly. Uh, don't try and depend on the technology. It's not really going to help you very much. It's going to look kind of cool, but if you don't really understand the skills you're talking about, it's not going to be that much of a help. All right, so that's the warning to start off with. So just a quick review of the technologies that we have today. Of course, we have computers. Those have been around for a long time. And I have to say that, you know, uh, as computers evolved, so did my uh, study of human movement uh, and uh, motion analysis, error detection, and correction. And so I've been using computers for a long time. The thing but today, though, that's different is they're extremely powerful and relatively convenient and inexpensive. You can buy a little laptop for, that's much more powerful than the computers I started with. Uh, when I was a, a young undergraduate student and young graduate student even. And so the thing that's nice is they're convenient and they're inexpensive. Uh, they can be combined with video cameras, which are also small and relatively inexpensive, to create good analysis systems. The problem is the more hardware that you're packing around, the more difficult it makes it. So you. What's happened in the last five years, so when I said the technology in the last five years is starting to come to the point where it can be used, is that it, uh, we're now to the point where we're can, we can use smartphones and tablets. And so that means that we've got things we can stuff in our pocket, and this is always in my pocket of practice now, my phone. It's just always there because it can do so many things now. And if you apply the technology correctly, it can make a big difference. So the thing that's changed in the last three years is a lot of the, the smartphones and tablets have high-speed video cap capability. And until we got to the high-speed video capability, the again, it was relatively limited. Because video is fine, but at 30 frames a second, which is the normal picture rate that your uh, typical video camera will work at. Uh, some of them will go 60, you may even have the odd one that will go to 100. Uh, but if you're not going for volleyball, 100 frames per second is kind of the low level that you can work at. And for many years that's what I was forced to work at. Some of my first uh, 16 millimeter film research was done at 100 frames a second. But for volleyball, because of the speed, the arms moving, the balls moving and so on, uh, it doesn't uh, present a very good picture to help you. All right. Uh, in addition to the high-speed uh, video capabilities that the the, uh, the tablets and the phones have, um, they are in the last probably three years they've come up with excellent video apps. And the beauty of apps, of course, is they're inexpensive. Where with the computers, the software that I used to have to spend was like start at five hundred dollars and go up for just one piece of software. But today you can get an app for five bucks, 
some, many of them for free. A lot of the ones that I use, I, I originally got for free. I think they charge now, but I got in early on the ground floor. floor. All right, so uh, these are excellent and they're available that enable two, two things that are important, video delay and slow motion analysis. And we're going to look at these two possibilities in a lot more detail today. All right, the other thing that's nice about them is because these things are connected to the rest of the world, we're, it's easy to share our files. And it's great for the coach to have the knowledge and have the videos and you know my camera that I used to pack around. Uh, that was pretty decent at, uh, at, at collecting high-speed video. I had, to, I had it in the camera. That, that's no good for sharing with the athlete, although I could sit them down and look at the little two-by-two -two screen and say, okay, this is what's going on. And it was sort of okay. But it's sitting, in fact, I just found it sitting in my desk at home the other day, and I went, geez, this thing's like worth 500 bucks. I wonder if I can sell it on Kijiji, and I actually looked to see what I could get, and I couldn't find anybody who wanted the damn thing, so that was the end of that. So smartphones and tablets, they're relatively inexpensive for what you get. Uh, because we're packing the phones anyway, uh, most of us aren't really going to have to go out and buy anything new, uh, in, in, at least with the, uh, the phones, and a lot of people now are having the tablets, that's replaced the books, the other bedside tables, and so on. So. The phones and the tablets are just part of everyday life today. And then the last thing that's, uh, that I kind of threw up here, and, uh, and, and, and that is uh, Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is really important for uh, moving the information around, whether it's your gymnasium uh, or sharing it with the, uh, the internet or whatever it is you want to do. The ability to use Wi-Fi is also important. And today you can buy routers that enable you to set up wireless communication between your devices. And I'll show you some examples of how we use it with the, uh, the Pandas uh, as well. And, uh, and they're relatively simple to set up. It's not like the original routers that were really difficult to set up. If you set up your first home network, you know what a pain in the ass, that, excuse my language, uh, it was. Uh, but it really was. But today you kind of plug them in and they just work. You push a button and everything and everything goes. So those are the technologies that we'll kind of focus on today uh, as we look at this. All right, so in, uh, I'm talking, going to look at two different scenarios, both practice and in competitions uh, for using um, uh, our apps. And the first thing I'm going to look at is using uh, the video delay apps. All right. Uh, and what these apps do is they enable video replay to be delayed by a set amount of time. So I mentioned to you that it's about controlling time. So this is the first example in the video delay apps where we get to control the time. All right. So what this does is it allows the athlete or coach to immediately review the skill, or it could be gameplay, but we're focusing today on skills, in a continuous manner. So we can use it as a part of our practice system if we set it up right. And I'll talk about some of the key points to do that. Uh, you can use with a Wi-Fi router to transmit it to a TV. And that's what, we use, uh, that's what we do with the pandas. And again, televisions today are, like this one's about, I don't know, uh, it's pretty old because it's heavy. You can always tell like, the age of, of televisions today by how heavy they are. You know, the first one I took in my house took me and my two brothers to carry the damn thing in. And, and, and the last one I got a 50, big 52-incher, I just picked it up, it was in a little box myself. And so it does make a big difference. I uh, am a big believer in trying to make the picture, pictures worth a thousand words. And that's one little problem with the, uh, the, the phones especially, is the picture's pretty small. But if you can get uh, a television, they're not that expensive, go to a Costco and you don't need a great one, just one that'll hook up to your system. And uh, I'll talk, I can talk a little bit about that later. All right. Uh, the other thing is it's nice about these, uh, these video delay apps is that the, you can take clips if you want and you can export them or send them to your athletes by email, YouTube, etc. They all come with a little button you pop and says send it off to YouTube and you send it off to YouTube and tell your athlete where to find it and, and then they can go in and look at it themselves in their time. So again, it's about controlling time. Uh, now some of these apps, although they're not particularly designed for this, uh, allow some il illustrative markings. So to go <coughs> there, put arrows on them or angles and that kind of stuff. Uh, they have a little bit of that, but they're not really designed for that. All right? 
And uh, so there are, I've got some apps here that I've listed that I have personally worked with myself. Uh, the first one, and this is the one that, uh, that I use, more, uh, that I sort of decided to end up with. It's called uh, Live Video Delay. It's only a $7 app. And what I like best about it, it gives you the ability to have your delay up to 10 minutes long. And you say, 10 minutes, that's a long time. But there are times when you, you might want a fair bit of time. The other apps are not quite as good. This one called uh, BAM Video Delay is only 11 bucks, a little more expensive. But it only allows two minutes maximum delay. And uh, so you're a little bit limited with that. And then the last one, it's quite a nice app, is this Replay Cam for $4. And, uh, but it only gives you up to a one minute delay. It has some other nice features, but one minute many times is simply uh, not enough uh, time. All right, so just got to make sure. All right, so what I'm going to show you first is uh, how we use this uh, video delay and uh, system and I've got a video here of us actually using this video delay app um, and this is the television we use in the gym it's on a cart and we just roll it into practice and uh, and uh, and I have a, an Apple TV set up and I have a router uh, it doesn't have to be that expensive a router although one of the things you'll find today as more and more technologies around is that you you really need to have the five gigahertz routers if you get them because otherwise there's a lot of interference you'll get with a lot of the other signals around and so you want to make sure you do that but they're not they're still not they're less than a hundred bucks to get a router and Apple TV you can get the first version for less than a hundred dollars and so this whole system here uh, set up probably today you could do for less than five hundred dollars and that in my opinion is five hundred dollars very well invested all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, get my, uh, my uh, machine here, my tablet. Uh, and this isn't what we use in practice, but this has got the, uh, I made a little video of uh, what's, uh, what we do in practice, uh, just so I could show you. And I'm just getting signed on here. All right, and don't remember my password. <laughs> All right, and um, so I'm just going to play you this uh, video clip. Whoops, what happened? There it is. Okay, so this is an example of how we use this video delay. So what's happening is uh, every practice, every single practice, Lori works uh, at the beginning of practice with the setters for 15 to 20 minutes just on trajectories, execution, and, uh, and skills. And what happens is the setter, we have two setters, and the one setter is training, all right, in this case uh, working on trajectories, and at this point in the season, the setter kind of controls the trajectories that they feel like they need work with. Uh, but early in the season, Lori will control that, and she'll control the trajectories she wants them to work with. She'll oftentimes start over here, so she's tossing herself and controlling the passes for the setters. And, uh, and then all the setter's doing is just continually uh, executing. So you can see the number of reps she's getting. She may or may not be getting feedback from Lori, uh, depending on uh, what's going on. Certainly early in the season, a lot more feedback. Error detection and correction uh, is going on when Lori's running the, uh, the drills. Okay, so once the... Uh, she's done, then what happens is the next, the other setter comes in, and when this setter comes in and it's her turn to go, you can see the drill gets going right away, then the first setter goes and she comes over to watch the television, all right? And, uh, oops, okay, this is uh, just about down here. All right, and we're gonna stop this. All right, so now I'm going to show you just, uh, where are we here, there it is, no, that's not it. Okay, so it, we just saw, that's Mariah, that's our, our, our starting setter. She's just finishing off her um, setting here, 
And so you'll watch what happens. So, so when she's done here in just a sec, she'll come over and uh, you'll watch what happens. They then exchange. So it gives you an idea of what she's doing. One of the things you'll notice is how consistent her trajectories are. And I can guarantee you, without the hard work that she's put in and the number of reps, it wasn't like that uh, last year. All right, but she's getting extremely good and it makes a big, big difference here. I'm just going to move this along here. Okay, so now she's switching with the other setter. All right, and so Mariah now comes over and you can see, this is the TV here, she is uh, watching her own reps. You can see her. So she's analyzing herself at this point. So the way you can set, you can set this up is you could have it. So, and I sometimes, if I'm around, and I see something with her setting. I might join in, Lori's still running the drill, and I'll join in and I'll provide some feedback here too. So there's kind of two opportunities for feedback during the actual execution of the skill and then, and, and then during the, uh, the video itself. So it gives you a real good opportunity to do that. But I, you know, I can't emphasize too much the importance of um, making sure that you, you think about the use of this technology and this, this simple app uh, that just delays the video, in this case for a minute and I think it's 14 seconds. Lori's got it down to the second. All right, a minute and 14 seconds, she runs a drill, they come, they do the review, and they switch places again. So in 20 minutes, they get a huge number of reps and, uh, and get to work on things that are important for them. So that happens every single practice uh, with our team. Uh, and uh, so uh, it, you can see, well, we've seen the difference tremendously uh, with our athletes. Now, I'm the um, uh, sort of the technical coach for the team. That's my primary responsibility, really focusing on uh, attacking and blocking. Uh, Lori focuses on the setting, and uh, our now departed uh, uh, Mia uh, is uh, back in Japan, and so we have other coaches that work on more on the defensive skills. So one of the things that, that uh, I do, I'm just going to move my video or my PowerPoint along here. Some uh, setup tips and, and so on. I just want to talk a little bit about it. First of all, when you're setting up the camera, you want to make sure you have a full range of motion. So the worst thing that can do, and again, I've learned this with making the mistakes, is do something like try to follow the athlete. Well, that doesn't give you a feel and it doesn't give them a feel for what's going on. So for certainly something like this, you can see the field of view we have is the full width of the court. All right, so we want to make sure that we can actually see the pass of the trajectories because that's what's critical. Because if those sets aren't in the right place at the right time, it, it, it can present a problem. So we want to make sure you get a full range of motion so you can see the angle of the body part. So if I'm doing, for example, middle attacking, I'll make sure that both the approach and the, uh, uh, and the actual attacking action can be seen. All right? Uh, now, you need to design your drills to allow for sufficient rep, reps, just call it the number of reps for the skill, that the coach or athlete to be able to see multiple executions of the skill. So that has two purposes. One, if you don't have multiple reps, then everything just happens too fast. Okay? People are just running around like crazy. So the minimum you probably can get away with are three reps of a skill. And that's kind of where I'm at. So when I'm doing something we're particularly working on, uh, I'll, I'll get it down to about three reps. Now, one of the things you have to be aware of is just doing one, one rep because oftentimes, there will be a, an error made that I call is a one-off. And so an athlete might come look, what day? You know, why am I doing that? And they'll get all wired about it. And yet, if they have looked at two more reps or three more reps, uh, they would have seen that, in fact, they don't do that all the time. That was kind of a one-off. It could have been the set or it could have been a number of things. So you have to be really careful about not getting sort of wired about looking at one rep of a skill and deciding that there's some particular problem. Um, uh, drills using a circuit format work best. So for example, when I'm working with the middles, uh, we have four middles. I'll have uh, a middle running her reps. I'll have uh, a middle blocking, a middle person getting ready, and a middle person doing this. That, that is watching their execution of their skills. And they just kind of rotate in a circuit. So they get to work on the blocking, they get to work on their attacking, and they get to come here and, and analyze their skill. 
All right. Now, the coach can either provide feedback during the drill, execution of the skills, or during the review of the video, and I've done both, or I do both. All right, so when the drill's going, uh, usually I have an assistant coach helping me at my age now. They, they give me an assistant coach with a strong arm and that kind of stuff. And so I just get to stand there and uh, not quite Japanese style with a cigarette hanging out of my mouth and a coffee in my hand. Uh, but I, at least I'm, I'm just kind of standing there. I don't do a lot of actual physical anymore. Um, but um, so I will provide feedback to the, the athletes uh, either during the drill itself uh, and then what happens is they, I give them the feedback, your arm's too low or something like that. And then what they'll do is then they go and look at the video and they say, ah, the coach isn't crazy. Look at how low my arm is all the time. And they go, okay, I got to think about that next time I come around in the next part of the circuit. Uh, or I might, depending on, again, what I'm, if it's something that's really requires me to really be picky and for them to see and me to talk to them, I'll come over here and I'll point out to them, you know, your, your hand position isn't particularly good here, or your arm isn't in the right position, and so on, and I'll, I'll point out to them. One thing we've been having trouble with some of our transitions off of blocking, and so they, they right now I've been working on the uh, middles in the, one of their transitions, they get too wide. And so any sets that die inside, they're kind of shafted. And so I say to them, you've got to stay inside the court. And so they go, oh, no, I am inside the court. And then I go, no, 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 come to watch. All right, and then you can show them. Then the light bulb goes on. And then they, then they can figure out a way themselves. So it can make a big difference. Now, video, dena video delay analysis should not take time away from the skill reps. And these are, again, mistakes I made earlier is that I'd do these things and then the athletes would come to the side and they'd stand and they'd look and then we'd go back and we'd start the drill again and waste time, waste time, waste time, waste time. You've got to be really careful about this. You know, time's precious. You know, you're paying for gym time and those kinds of things. You want to make sure that you're really efficient with the use. And this app is really simple. It's great to use and it makes a, a big, big difference. All right. The next one is, uh, in practice, is a slow motion analysis, all right? And this is a, especially important for uh, identifying errors in skill actions of very high speeds, such as striking actions like in spiking, or balls where your hands are at contact when you're blocking a ball. If you don't have the high speed video, it's a blur, and I'll show you some examples of the difference between <coughs> good high speed and, and then the regular speed of, of video. And again, I've learned this uh, by mistake. Now for me, that mistake is a long ways back because that's why I started using 16 millimeter high speed film was because I went, I can't see anything, it's all blurry. So uh, it, makes, it makes a big difference. So these apps are different uh, because they're designed for actual error detection and correction and analysis. They enable a video recording of a skill, a drill, or team play, and then to play it back in slow motion. So, um, just to give you an example, on my, this is an iPhone 6 Plus, and the 6 is, I think, 6 and up. This comes with uh, up to uh, a camera that goes up to 240 frames a second, and that's a real good number. Uh, so you can get an iPhone 6 Plus now, because it's a couple, at least one generation old, maybe two generations old, so you don't need to even spend a lot of money, you can go buy one of these, probably for $150 now, and uh, it works great as a phone, that's all you need is a phone too, it's got everything that the 7 is, except you can't drop it in the lake when you're fly fishing like I do, so um, that's the only real advantage that I see for the 7, so you can go get the 6 Plus right now, and uh, it's very, very good. All right. Uh, the other thing it does is it allows side-by-side -side comparisons of skills. Almost all of these, and I'll, I'll list some apps again uh, that I've used and the, the ones that I'm presently using. The other thing it does is it allows illustrative marking on the video. Uh, quite a bit of it. You can do lots of things. Uh, as with the, the video delay, clips can be exported by email, YouTube, etc. So the same kind of thing. Uh, and uh, in this case, some of the example I've got some examples of of, of these, um, these apps that I've used. First one is Coach's Eye. It's a fairly popular one and many of you may already have it, which is great. Uh, so it's good, but you really want to make sure you have the high-speed video to go with it. 
Um, Dartfish Express, a little more expensive, and that comes from the big, Dartfish is a company that got into uh, more sport motion analysis a long time ago. Now they originally were computer based, and, and now they're realizing that uh, everybody's packing these things, they had to get into the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, smartphone and, and tablet uh, market. So they've got uh, this Dartfish Express, it's uh, 10 bucks. And then another one called Hoodle Technique that I've used, and it's, uh, it's free, this one's free. However, those of you that have apps know that when you get it free, you don't ever get it free. Uh, you've got these stupid ads that keep popping up. So, uh, well, it's quite a good app. I use it actually uh, for my, my own personal golf swing in the summertime. Uh, it, it seems to work better for that than some of the others. Uh, but uh, the main one that I use is uh, Coach's Eye. So what I'm going to show you now is... Uh, make sure I've got this right. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to... Now, I hope the people at the back can hear this. We've got the speakers. We'll make sure they're cranked right up. Analyze a video. Select any video in your library. Tap Analyze on the video. I got to start it over. To analyze a video, select any video in your library. Can you hear it? Tap Analyze on the video. Use the flywheel to scrub through your video frame by frame. Use two fingers or double tap to zoom in. The playhead indicator shows you where you are at in the video. Tap the slow-mo button in the bottom left-hand corner to play your video at half speed. Compare two clips by tapping compare in the top right-hand corner or tapping select in the video library. Use the flywheel independently on each video to find just the right spot. Then. Tap the link in the middle to join the two flywheels. To record your analysis with voiceover and drawing, tap the red record button at the top. Make sure Coach's Eye is allowed to use your microphone by checking your iPad or iPhone settings. Use your tool palette on the right hand side to select your shape and color of choice. Use precision tools available in the store to provide more detailed feedback. When you're done, tap the record button again, and you've just completed your analysis video. All right, so this is the this is the uh, the, the app that I have on the phone, and uh, again, I am going to just turn this guy off. Okay, so this is um, this is a, a, an example of use of the the app, and I'm going to take kind of take you through. That was just a real quick overview. That's the uh, one of their promotional videos. I thought I'd throw it up because it kind of is. A, you can kind of see everything it does. That way, I don't have to talk about it. Things like all the marking that you can do are on the side, uh, and so on. But this is uh, uh, one of our athletes, and uh, again, so this is shot at 240 frames a second. And so you can see now the advantage of being able to see what's going on. So now watch when she swings her arm, how clear it is, all right? So this is an athlete that we've been working on for about a year and a half now. And uh, fabulous athlete, uh, had some technical problems with spiking that were really limiting her ability to, to hit the ball, uh, particularly to hit the ball hard. And, and high, and so we've been uh, working on this 
this arm project that I call it. And what's really nice is, of course, you can, you can stop the ball right on her hand. And there's no, hardly any blur. And that's the importance of the 240 frames a second. So at 100, you're still going to have some blur. So that's, a, a, you know, I can't emphasize too much the importance of getting a phone that will do 240. And I, I checked, uh, I've been a, an iPhone user because my wife insisted on having it so, you know, what it is. My wife says, that's what you have, that's what you have. And I wanted a camera that would do 240, and so, so I got this one here. But uh, all the, uh, if you're into the other, uh, if you're not using iPhones, that's great, because I checked, they all, all of the good ones now have uh, cameras that'll do 240, so you can, and this app's available for, for the other phones as well. All right, so you can see the beauty of this, of course, is, is to do something like that. Now, the other thing that it does is it uh, allows you to uh, compare and this project started, this hitting project of mine actually started about six years ago. A Japanese team was here, and their striking action is quite distinct. And it took me a while to kind of figure out what they were doing and the value of it, and why, it's, why it works so well. The Japanese women have the best striking technique in the world. And that's the only reason they, and I believe that they can compete at the level that they compete at because certainly, as far as a genetic pool, they're not gifted with tall, leaping athletes like some other countries. And, and so they have to be technically really good. And so this project uh, started with me analyzing them and, and then starting to implement it with, with our athletes uh, in our club. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to show you. Uh, where is it here? Okay, so on this side is that video you just looked at, and with this app you can then bring in another video that I filmed uh, a little over a year ago. We had a Japanese team here, and uh, what I was able to do was to get the athletes synchronized. So you can sync them so that they are going at the same point. So I want you to watch. So see this distinctive arm position, this is what we're looking for, so that the hand is in this position, not the old bow and arrow position that we used to talk about. We want the hand in this, what I call an externally rotated position. And so we've been working with Mary on this for about a little over a year now, and she's getting very, very good. She's going to be one of the next Panda stars uh, coming in with the, the new generation of athletes coming in. But it all came from the, the use of this. So I was able to show her what we were looking for, looking at the Japanese players, and then get her to work on that. Now there's a long progression into getting her here. It didn't happen overnight. And it certainly didn't happen with one or two simple video sessions like this, but rather came as a result of being able to show her side by side. Now we're still, there's one thing right now we're still working on with her. So the arm action's actually very, very close to, to what I would say, tac you're technically perfect. But she still gets in a position in the air where you can see her legs here are starting to pike uh, forward. And there's a problem with that from a uh, biomechanics perspective because it, in fact, when you pike, it lowers your body down in the air. Well, it doesn't lower your body, but it lowers the upper part of your body, which is the part that's hitting the ball. So we're trying to get her to be more like a Japanese player. See how when they jump, they tuck their legs up here? Well, that tucking of the legs is really important from a mechanics perspective because it allows the athlete to maintain their angular momentum because their arm's going forward. So something has, arm's going forward on top, something has to go forward on the bottom. So you can do it the way she's doing it by piking. All right, so the legs are flipping, the arm's going this way. Or you can do it like the Japanese player does and she tucks her legs up behind her and instead of piking, she just snaps them down like this. So her position at contact much straighter than in the air. She isn't so piking. Now Mary jumps way higher than she does. Uh, and so 
Mary was kind of given that up by, by doing this piking. So anyhow, we're not here to talk about that. I could talk about that all day too. Uh, but uh, rather to show you how we can use this technology in this case to really make a big difference in changing the technique of an athlete. Do you ever hear a coach or some speaker at a conference say that you can't change spiking action? They're wrong. And I've got all kinds of examples that I could show you where I've changed spiking action. But it takes lots of work and it doesn't happen overnight. You're looking at a one to two year uh, process to do that. So anyhow, just a, a side sidebar there. Uh, okay, so next is, back to this, talk about technology, eh? Okay. All right, so just, oops. there we go. Okay, some, some setup and tips for, for using the high speed apps. Set the frame rates as high as possible, all right? Now some cameras only go to 100 or 120, um, but the, even that is so much better than 30 that you won't, uh, you, you'll be able to, the difference is, is huge. And, and that's because of the blur. So I've got here, I'm just gonna bring an example of what happens at 30. All right. Oh, I guess it's about the same. All right, so this is an athlete here. Unfortunately, the people at the back, this picture is uh, vertical. Now, this was framed at 30 accidentally. I forgot to change my app, and I had it at 30 for sort of regular filming. And you can see here, like, you can't see the arm at all. Like, it's just a huge blur. And uh, so it makes a big, big difference. So make sure, make sure that you set the frame rate as, as high as you possibly can. All right. Set the camera angle, similar to the, uh, the, uh, the video delay, to cover the full range of motion at a good angle so you can see all the body parts. Design the drills to allow sufficient reps. Same kind of thing. You want to do multiple reps if you can. And so on. So. That is the, a look at the use of the apps in uh, apps and technology in practice. So two main uses that we use all the time, that I use all the time, like I said, this is in my, in my pocket. But for the high speed stuff, I pack it in my pocket and say we're doing a serving drill. I'll just wander around, pull it out of my pocket, and an athlete struggling with something, I might take a picture. So I'm not taking away from their practice time. And then I might pull them out if we have time to have a look at it there, or I'll pull them out after practice and show them that as well. So the main thing is, if you're going to use this in practice, don't take away time from the, the reps that the athletes need. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the use during, match, during matches. All right, both video delay and the slow motion apps can be used, and I have used them in, for both. It's a good way to get started with match analysis by using these little small apps. All right, they, they are, they're quite good and I still use uh, them at the beginning of the season when I'm doing more technical because the, the problem with the general apps that I'll show you in a second that are designed specifically for match analysis is they don't have high speed video capability. So early in the season when we're playing exhibition matches I will use the high speed function to actually take actual games during matches so that we can, so that I can do the analysis. So that the uh, one I showed you of Mary, the first one of Mary was actually taken at an exhibition match against uh, UBCO down in uh, Canmore. And so I use it to show them what they actually do during the matches because it's one thing in practice, it's another thing in matches, but you can, it's a good way to get started is to use these general apps. Um, the other thing that it's good for, although it's a little bit limited, is bench use, all right? So by having a Wi-Fi setup, you can actually get the delay to come to the bench if you have a tablet on the bench. And there's a way to do it, but it does, it's not very efficient, so I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to sort of lead you down the path. We tried it last year, 
and we did it until uh, early on in the season this year, and then we got out to UBC and found out their internet connection or their Wi-Fi was really shitty, and so we were kind of screwed. And once you get used to using the technology on the bench, uh, it's kind of like uh, you, you lost a right arm or something. All right. Uh, the other thing that is important once you get into match analysis, because there's so much going on, is what we call tagging. So that's identifying, um, say for example, um, um, looking at a particular athlete. So I would tag it Shawnee. Uh, Shawnee is one of our middle players, and if uh, there's something that I see on the, the app, uh, then I will tag it with Shawnee. And then when I go to show Shawnee what she's doing in matches, then it's really easy for me to bring up those apps. Otherwise, again, you waste a lot of time. All right, some tips for using this general technology that we've looked at. Generally better to use a baseline view of the court. All right, if the emphasis on skills, the best view is from floor level. Now oftentimes you can get up above and you can film down, but analyzing skills, which is what this session's about, it's way better to be down at court level. So kind of the eye level as you would see as a coach standing on the court. So make sure you do that. You want to start the recording at the beginning of the rally and stop at the end. So what you end up with, and I'm just going to show you on my phone, is, go back to the coach's eye, and um, so this is from earlier in the season. This is some matches. I'm just going to pull up a, an example here. So this is at uh, the University of uh, Regina tournament, and so this is an example of, here I've got a young middle who's, uh, who performed very well for us last night, and she started off with, so this is just a rally, so I, you can see the start of the rally goes, we just run along and comes out, we get a free ball, and we've been really working on the middles coming, being really aggressive, coming fast, so we can do this. All right, so that I can show her, get her arm up. Now, she got it up, but the setter missed her. But anyhow, all right, this is just, I happen to love a bad example. But <laughs> that's okay. I, I would look at that and I would say, okay, no, her arm was back. That's the setter's fault. All right, so anyhow, the thing I'd say to her if I was talking to her about it, I'd say, look, your arm was up. Looks like it's ready to go. You're early enough. Uh, the setter's just got to find you with that ball. All right, so this is uh, really good. So again, these are kind of the key points you can see. I'm standing at the end of the court. Uh, one of the things that's really nice, although it's a little bit scary, is to kind of set the camera up, leave it there, and you can get these uh, Bluetooth remotes. So you can start and stop it. Some of the apps work pretty well. Some of them don't work at all. Uh, with these remotes, you can sit at the bench and start and stop it. Uh, otherwise, what I usually do, because then I get an extra view, is I actually stand behind the camera. Whoops. I stand behind the camera so I can see it live and then I can see it again on the, on the replay later on so I get a good feel for, for what was going on. All right, so you could use uh, video de uh, the video delay, same kind of thing. I, we used it at uh, start first time at Nationals two years ago. I sat in the end zone with the camera and I would see the, and we had the delay set so that it would last the length of a rally. So at the end of a rally, I would get an immediate replay uh, of what went on before. Now at that time I wasn't sitting on the bench and so I was only allowed at that time to come to the bench in between sets and so I would see these things twice and I would go and provide the feedback. Since then uh, other coaches in Canada decided that Pierre's been doing this for 15 to 20 years and it really wasn't fair, fair that uh, the Pandas had a coach that could sit up in the stands, get one view, and then run down uh, in between sets and give some coaching. So they kind of complained about that and uh, almost exactly a year ago as a matter of fact. And so we had to go to something else. And so we've gone to uh, another program that's a little more sophisticated that uh, I've got 10 minutes and we'll talk about those uh, as well uh, next. And that is more sophisticated programming to do this uh, video delay and video analysis. So this is... Um, Oh yeah, the last thing about uh, when you're using these things is make sure you're tagging this information. You spend time tagging before you spend time with the athlete, otherwise you end up stumbling around looking for the actual uh, app that, or uh, video clip that you're looking for. Alright, 
Okay, so what we're, I'm just going to quickly look at now, and I just want to say up front, I'm not a salesman, um, but uh, I'm just going to show you these things. There, um, there's some promotional, two promotional videos I'm going to show you by, by a couple of these, uh, these programs. And uh, they're really uh, the two that I believe are on the market that you should uh, consider. The first one is a, an app that you've probably heard a lot of. And this is a huge, huge program, goes back a, a long, long time, and it's called Data Project. You may have heard about it as Data Volley. All right, so the, the present software is very expensive. All right, it's, uh, and it's been expensive from the very beginning. Now, they sell it as a, an annual subscription, and it costs you 800 US per year, and depending on the Canadian dollar, you know what that's like, not very good. Um, all right, but it's an incredible piece of software. However, it is a piece of software. That is, it runs on a computer, is tied into a video camera, and so on. So it's designed for extremely detailed team and player analysis. Uh, you, really, it requires dedicated and trained staff to do it well. Uh, Lori's been using it with the Pandas for, oh, at least 15 years, probably more like 17 or 18 years one of the early adopters to this software, and uh, she's a wizard at using this, but it's taken her a long time, and then we've had IT people that have worked with us uh, to be able to collect the video, uh, put in the tagging, and so on. So this system requires a good video camera, computer, Wi-Fi router, and a tablet on the bench to optimize the use. You need a lot of people to make this work, all right? Uh, it enables a video delay, on the bench. So this is where we are now. So now I sit on the bench. And you'll see I have a little uh, tablet and this system allows a delay video sent to the bench so I get to see an instant replay after every single rally uh, of what went on, which is unbelievable. So those coaches that were trying to give us a disadvantage ended up giving us a bigger advantage and we just found a better way uh, to do that. So now I do the same thing I did sitting in the stands now right on the bench as you can imagine, the feedback is much better when I'm sitting right on the bench. All right, now, this $800 per year is pretty expensive, but they have a, a slightly simpler to use version uh, that's $200 a year US, uh, and it's uh, kind of much simpler to use. You don't need to be really highly trained. You can turn on a video camera and turn on the computer uh, and so on. It's pretty easy to use, and it uses an, an app uh, to, uh, to do uh, some, uh, what they call click and scouts, you can, you can sort of tag it on the fly. Uh, but it requires, again, a fair bit of equipment, good video camera, computer, a Wi-Fi router, and tablet on the bench to optimize its use. But it's, it's a real good, I, I would say, starting point. $200 US per year isn't that much if you're in a club, or a big club. That will allow you to use it in, uh, in more than, on more than one team, so it's not that much money for you to invest. <coughs> All right, um, let me see. I do have a video, but you know, um, I think you can all look this up. You can find these promotional videos either on YouTube or actually go to the uh, website. Um, so this is the, uh, the it's called uh, dataproject.com. Uh, just go there, all of the information is there. The video that I've got that I've uh, run out of time to be able to show you. Uh, is there, it's three minutes and I've only got five and I want to show you uh, one more uh, piece of software that I think is uh, kind of the next wave uh, of software uh, to use, All right? So data project, so think about doing that, especially think about this click and scout. If you have a lot of people in your club and people that are like computer geek type people, you might want to get them involved this way as well. All right. Uh, the next one is a new system. So when I started, uh, when, they, when they asked um, uh, me to sort of do this, I started looking to see what else was out there besides data volley. I've done presentations before at this conference using data volley. People go, whoa, that's great, but, you know, and I go, okay, I, I get that. Uh, you know, it does require a lot of resources and a lot of uh, learning uh, to be able to make it work. So I started running around and I actually first ran into this Echo 1612 company and they, they used it first with football. 
Well, football and volleyball are kind of similar in the fact that the play starts and then it ends. And then you have a, a period of time before the next play starts and then it ends. So they were, while they were developing it for football, somebody came along, must have come along, and said, listen, I think we can modify this to make it use, usable for volleyball. So now they developed what is called Echo Volleyball. This isn't an annual subscription. You buy everything. And I just talked to uh, the uh, sort of the sales manager for the United States, and I've been dealing with him for a couple of months now, uh, just to kind of test it out and try it out and so on. And this software is uh, 500, or software, and there is some hardware that comes with it, is five to six hundred dollars U.S. And he said you have to really get in touch with him, and he will sort of give you the actual price for the what you're looking at. Just one team, it'll be less, and so on. Now that includes uh, cloud storage that they allow you to upload your videos, and that becomes important. Uh, plus a stat software that I'll explain to you in a second is important for the use of this as well. What's neat about this is it's based on, instead of a video cameras tied into a computer system, then tied into tablets, this is a system that's based right now using only iPads. All right, so only tablets. And, um, and so these tablets act as the camera and the analysis and the instant replay uh, but of course that means you need three of them, all right? So the complete system requires the use of three iPads. So then you go, oh, man, three iPads, you're looking at $1,500 at least. But I'll bet you that if you ask people in your club, there's probably 20 iPads at least in your club that you could borrow to use for the weekend, all right? So you're not going to have to go out and buy that hardware, at least that's my thoughts on it. Now right now they use the, the uh, iPads for the, for the camera as well. But in the future, they're looking at using the iPhone, because I kind of, that was one of the things when I was talking about, I said, well, why are you using the iPad? The iPhone and all, most of the smartphones have much better cameras than the tablets do. So he said that they're working on that, and you know, within a couple of months or so, they expo expect to be able to have uh, at least the uh, camera part using the iPhone. All right, so one camera acts, or one of the uh, uh, iPads acts as a camera, one acts as to use the stats. So how this program works is, you know, the on, some of you probably, how many of you use iStat? Anybody using iStat Volley? There's a few people using iStat Volley. So what this system does, it ties your stats program into the video capture, which means that it's automatically tagged, all right? Which means that you don't have to go back and do the tagging. So if you're doing the stats on the bench anyhow, that controls the camera. So you don't even have to control it, you just set it up, Somebody sitting on the bench doing the stats. And so that's two tablets. And then the last one is for the instant replay. Because once the, the, the play is done, that delivers back to the third iPad the instant replay. All right? And so then you can see, like the video delay, what went on. Only with much more sophisticated kind of information than a, a simple video delay uh, kind of a system. All right? So this system comes with software, not including the Stats app, which is, as I said, here is $28 for iStat or the Solo Stats is zero, although they give you one free year with that too, so uh, it's kind of included in this uh, price originally. Uh, and then included in that price is also a router that's already programmed and designed to work with the software and the tablets. And so it all just works. You just kind of plug it in and it goes. And, and that's the nice part. You don't have to mess around with routers and those kinds of things if you're not familiar with it. This one just plugs in and it works. Now, I haven't personally used this because it is relatively new, but Bench Heinrichs over at Nate has been using it, used it in the fall. Now, it's kind of still a little bit in sort of what I call beta format. That is, they're still getting some bugs worked out with it. And, uh, and so I phoned him just last week and said, Ben, you've been using it for a while, what do you think? He said, it's really good. He said, but it has some problems in that because he's with a varsity team and they collect a lot, a lot of data, the tablet was filling up with the data and then they, didn't, they couldn't put any more on and at that time they didn't have the cloud function working. So they couldn't upload it to the cloud. Now what's really neat is the, the way they've got it set up with the cloud 
is that you will be able to make that information available to whoever you want. So you know how parents today, and you go to a club program, and they're taking videos of their kid, trying to get them that uh, $100,000 scholarship down to the state somewhere, damn them. We want them to stay in Canada. Remind them all, we want them to stay in Canada. We want them to stay in Canada. I'll say it one more time, we want them to stay in Canada. All right? So they, anyhow, and they're, but they're doing it to the Canadian, for the Canadian uh, varsity programs as well, trying to get them into is now once it's up in the cloud, then they can make those available so that the, the parent can go in, choose their child with the tagging, and make a, a custom designed video clips of their child that then they can send on to the uh, university coaches or college coaches uh, for uh, recruiting purposes. All right, so this is uh, the Echo uh, Echo system, and it's very good. And there's the uh, echo1612.com. There again, there's a go there, there's a video that kind of explains it a little bit more. I had to rush this stuff, but it was the first part of this presentation that I felt was the most important anyhow. And, uh, and that, so that's, uh, this is specialized stuff, um, but it's not, you don't need this right away. You can use the technology that I talked about earlier on. So, 